What's up guys, it's Justin again with another video. Today we're going to be painting the other two uh, starter hunters and then we're going to probably break into uh, doing more batches of things. Uh, we'll see how everything goes from here. Uh, so these are the other two starter hunters. Uh, they are alternate sculpts from the uh, Kickstarter. Uh, these are alternate sculpts for the forest core box. Uh, they are gender swapped and uh, there are eight in total. So four of them are wearing starter gear, four of them are wearing uh, monster gear. Uh, these are the last two starter gear hunters that need to be painted. Um, we have the heavy sword or the great sword uh, and the bow. Um, now I'm using reference here uh, from Monster Hunter World, but uh, the, the general color scheme is very similar to the last one we did. Uh, the only difference is there's more metal. So uh, if you watched my last video, I'm going to just use whatever browns from that video that I thought uh, looked good. Uh, a couple of them will go in similar places. Um, and then we're just going to use more metallic paints. So uh, let me go ahead and get my palette straight and we'll go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take uh, mahogany and we're gonna go ahead and base coat pretty much the entire chest uh, we don't need to be neat here because everything's gonna be painted over and um, the majority of the chest armor is like a nice deep kinda ready brown so uh, I'm gonna focus this around the shoulders, the back, the chest, the stomach and then we'll you know highlight as needed um, another place I think I want to grab is uh, the big things that are holding these metal plates uh, on each of these minis. So just kind of reach in there, grab that stuff. In fact, I'll probably just paint the whole thing and then come back and touch everything else up. Alright, so there's about where we're sitting. Uh, every time I went back to look at the reference to find the next thing I wanted to paint, I'd find something else that I wanted to paint that first color. So we ended up doing uh, around the legs, uh, the armor, or around the armor panels here, the chest, uh, the forearms, and then there were flaps that hang down off the helmet as well. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab light ochre, and we're going to basically just paint these little flaps that hang down off the knees. Uh, those were on the last model, but they're a little different here. Um, so we're just going to paint these a light ochre. Um, I think that's what color that is. Umber. Light umber. Um, <clears throat> now, there's not really a ton else uh, in the way of... Uh, leather that I want to paint right this second. So from here, we are pretty much going to jump into metallic paints. Um, and that's majority of the rest of this scheme. And uh, I'm also going to wash everything kind of at the same time. So I'm going to let these dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to start putting some metals on my palette. Um, I was going to use the same metals for these as I did the last set. But I'm, I think my biggest problem with these Pro Curl paints, I don't love the metallics. They all have like a really bright silver blue kind of hue to them. Um, and I, I don't really, it's, it's hard to work with for me. Um, they're not bad paints. They have great coverage and they look nice. Uh, but it's just not quite what I'm looking for here. Uh, so we're going to use uh, Vallejo Metal Color. So I'll be right back once I get all that set up and this stuff is dried. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and jump into some metallics now. Uh, I'm going to switch over to, I think this will be an okay brush maybe. Yeah, uh, we're going to use Vallejo Metal Color. The first color we're going to start with is Dark Aluminum. And we're pretty much just going to base coat all of the metallics in this. Um, I like this because it's a dark but not like too dark metallic. It's a really good base to start with. It's like a better pigmented version of um, Lead Belcher. It's very similar in color. Um, 
if you don't have this, you don't have to go out and buy it. Just use whatever metallics work best for you. Uh, paint the metallics the way that you like to paint them. Um, I don't really go super duper in depth with the way I paint my metals. Um, it's probably something I should uh, work on and spend more time on, but I also like to, you know, get models on the table. <laughs> so I there's a compromise there. Um, there we go. So something like that. Um, now I'm not covering the blade because I think the blade for this is more of a uh, perhaps like a chunk of stone or something. Um, at least to my eye, the way it looks in game and and stuff like that. Um, you'll also probably notice that I ha I haven't painted any of the belts or anything like that, and that is intentional. Um, the idea is um, I left anything that I was going to highlight um, and stuff that you know was kind of like a last step where there's so much metal um, I didn't want to do a bunch of work and then have to go back and do that work again so I'm, I'm trying to make it as easy on myself as possible by planning out the steps in a different way than I normally would paint just to save myself a little bit of time. Now, yeah, that goes over like one or two more. The detail's a little bit muddier on the side, but that's okay. We can use the other side to figure it out. Um, but basically what we're going to do here is we're just going to grab anything and everything that's metal. Uh, so these chainmail shirts, the helmet, um, you know, the, the knife blade, all that stuff. Uh, grab everything that's going to be metal, just paint it all. All right, you can see we're uh, on the way to getting finished up with these. Now, uh, with this one in particular, I, I need to go back a little bit, uh, come back with that mahogany and kind of pick out this little chest plate a little bit again. Um, and that's, you know, if you got to do it, you got to do it. But I just wanted to show off real quick, uh, you know, what details got what. There's a lot of brown, there's a lot of silver. Um, and I didn't show too much of the bow guy. Um, so there's what that looks like. Something like that. Uh, now next, we are going to switch back to a brush that's going to give us a little more control. I'm going to take that black brown and we're going to paint uh, the pants pretty much. Um, and then like any other little details you want to grab. So like I'm going to grab the wrist or the, the wrist, the uh, upper arm detail here. Uh, I think on the bow gun or on the, the bow itself, I'm going to grab the upper part of the quiver um, let's see maybe the handle on the carving blade and that should be good for those details and we're gonna do that on both of those minis all right so now I'm gonna go ahead with that done I'm gonna grab uh, just a really warm brown I don't think I want that one I want this other one um, And I'm just going to grab whatever leather details remain. So, it, well, except for the straps. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the straps I did uh, with the last one, and that's kind of save them to the end. Uh, but any other leather that I missed or haven't painted yet, so pouches, stuff like that, um, this is a really good opportunity to grab the edges of the knee pads here. that up real bad but I can go back and fix it so it's not a huge deal but you know whatever else is left this is the perfect time to go back and pick those details out make sure that everything is is the way you want it make sure it's all uh, painted up and pretty much all we're gonna have left after this is straps skin and whatever miscellaneous details are left um, I am gonna grab the straps on the arm here just because I can see it um, yeah, that's pretty good. I think I did a bunch of that off camera. I'm so sorry. 
Uh, but yeah, so uh, a little pouch here. This little blade handle uh, thing. And then the corners of the knees. That little border there. Alrighty, so we'll be back. Alright, so while this is drying, it's a good opportunity to go ahead and do some wet blending. So we're going to grab a nice dampened brush. We're going to take a dark neutral gray, and I'm pretty much just going to paint this over the entirety of the blade here. Uh, I'm going to try not to get it on the metal parts. If I do, it's not a big deal because we haven't washed anything yet. And I'm just going to handle this one side at a time. So we're going to get that nice uh, and saturated how we want it. And to make my life easy, uh, I'm going to clean the brush off real quick. I'm going to take that bright neutral gray. I'm going to dip it in a little bit of dark neutral gray. I'm going to mix it. So it's kind of an intermediate. And I'm just going to grab this end here. Something like that. And I'm just going to blend it up towards that edge over here. Something like that. Clean my brush again. Just a little bit of that, that bright neutral gray by itself. And we're just going to feather the end of that a little bit. Uh, you can grab this top edge a little bit if you want. We just want to kind of influence these colors just a little. Not, not too, too much. Um, and we need to do this fairly quickly because we don't want we want the we want it to blend first of all but uh, we also don't want it to be like a a layered highlight we want to create that gradient uh, now we got to do the other side so same method um, I'll probably move my highlights uh, more like up and then down here on the bottom so I'll be back when that's done all right, so our blade is mostly dry. Um, now, it's dry enough that we can go ahead and do this next step, and that's just going to be uh, a stippled edge highlight. So I'm just going to kind of grab this top edge here. I'm going to drag it a little bit. I'm going to tap it a little bit. Uh, I'm using a mix of both the, the colors, uh, but it's not as bright as that one highlight we did. Uh, we just kind of we went heavier on the white than the gray just so that we can introduce uh, those gray tones. Now you can do as much of this or as little of this as you want. Um, I think a little bit goes a long way, but I also think the longer you spend on it, the better it's going to look. So we're just going to work our way around here like this. You can do some regular edge highlighting. You can also, uh, like I said, stipple it in. It creates that that worn edge look that I think is going to look really nice on this particular weapon. Uh, I'm also going to kind of poke at some of these scratches and stuff. You don't have to go too crazy and spend too much time here. Just take your time, work your way through what you want to work your way through, and uh, you know when you're done, call it done. Alright, so now that all of that is dry, everything looks good, um, we are going to take a, I'm going to take a black wash. You can use whatever kind of wash you want. I grabbed the wrong brush. Um, I'm going to use black just because I don't want to, um, quote, I guess, dirty the, the metallics. But this has got like a little bit of brown in it anyway, so it's not just straight black, but it's mostly black. And I'm just going to mop this across the entire model. Uh, we haven't painted anything that is like super important yet. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I guess we've painted majority of the model, but um, you know, nothing that we're going to mess up. And everything was painted with this step in mind. Uh, so we can just go ahead and grab this wash, and then we will kind of pick out a few things to make things stand out once this is done. So again, just a wash over the entire model. Um, don't let it pull too much. Uh, 
like around the feet is fine probably, but everything else, uh, I don't think I would let it pool a whole lot. And then that's just as simple as grabbing the side of your brush and just soaking it up uh, and then move it somewhere else. So we'll be back when that's dry. Alrighty, so now that we've got that all done and everything's dried, we are going to basically finish up the metallics. Uh, I'm going to use some Runefang steel here. Um, I'm just going to take an old janky brush and I'm just going to dry brush over uh, the sections that need little highlights. You don't have to do too much here. You don't have to go too crazy here. Um, this is just kind of an extra step to make things pop. This is going to look real nice on the chain mail. Uh, and, you know, it's going to hit those edges and kind of shine things up a little bit for you. Um, don't spend too much time on this. If you want, you can go back with your base tone or brighter tone and pick out things that you want manually. Um, but this is just the way that I'm doing my metallics. All right. So we've got a couple of last minute things to fix or to paint and we're done. Uh, the first one we're going to take a, I'm going to take like a very orangey kind of brown and we're going to paint all the leather that's left over. We're going to do that trim uh, around the outside edge of all this leather uh, that's kind of uh, around the neck and stuff like that. Um, we're going to grab these two. Um, and then we'll start painting the skin. So I'll be back once this is finished. All right, guys. I'm in kind of the moment of truth here. The last little bit that uh, uh, I'm painting differently. We're gonna paint uh, dark skin this time. Uh, so the first color I'm gonna use is a, uh, the Ninjon. It's from the Ninjon set. It's uh, dark plum. We're gonna start with a really dark, rich purple kind of color. And that is going to act as our um, base for everything. It's going to help enrich those brown tones and make everything pop. Um, now with this bow guy, uh, his hand is very much uh, tucked away. So I'm going to grab his thumb there and I'm going to leave the, le the rest of it alone. Uh, now this is probably going to be our, well, both of these examples are not great because um, their faces are pretty covered up um, but I'm gonna do my best to kind of illustrate what I'm going for here uh, this one's actually gonna be like pretty pretty rough because I can barely get my brush in there at all anyway so I guess we'll use the bow as an example um, but we'll, we'll see what we can come up with. So uh, base coating like the knees on the female model because they're wearing a skirt, or she's wearing a skirt. Um, and then again, grab the fingers. I think they are all wearing fingerless gloves. go something like that and I'm gonna keep poking around at this one and uh, try and get this all figured out all right so the next step in my progression is going to be a uh, dark flesh with just a little bit of that dark plum mixed in and I'm going to use this to kind of rebase coat just about everything if you can help it try to avoid some recesses uh, and if it's helpful uh, just try to paint those details that um, you know the same way we, we highlighted the face on the last mini uh, start with the forehead and the cheeks grab the nose the top of the lip the chin and then uh, as you work your way up through your progression just try and cover a little less each time now unfortunately the only place that this is really going to show uh, on camera is the knee here because uh, everything else is so heavily covered. 
but I'm going to treat it very much the same way uh, as I did the other one. Uh, we're just going to grab the front top facing parts of that. We're going to leave the very back that plum color because these colors are married, um, meaning we mixed a little bit of plum into this dark brown skin tone color. Uh, I think it's called dark skin or dark flesh. Um, it's going to kind of seamlessly blend a little bit better. And then we're going to take our next color up. Uh, that is, I think, warm brown. We're going to mix just a tiny bit of that plum into that. We're just going to grab kind of just the very top of the knee, the front of the knee. You can pull it into the side a little bit if you want to, but you don't really have to. Um, and then our last color in that progression is going to be um, that warm brown mixed with shadows flesh. Um, now you can push this as far as you want. I wouldn't recommend pushing it too too far. You're gonna get a nice orangey kind of brown out of it and it's a really good kind of final highlight color without pushing it too too far. It looks almost like a Caucasian skin tone. Uh, I would only put this on extreme 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 highlights um, just a dot here and there. Um, you know, grab the edge of the knuckles so it looks like the fingers are bending and, and the skin is stretching and, you know, the tip of the nose, tip of the chin. Don't, don't go too crazy with this. Uh, you, you don't need a lot of this. You've, um, now I mean, if, if you want a lighter but still dark skin tone, that's a way you can do it, uh, but if you want it to read as a dark skin tone, don't push it too far. Uh, that's pretty much where the mini is going to sit. Uh, we still have to do scout flies. I'll do that one more time on this video just to, to show the process. Um, but I'm going to paint these faces first. Alrighty, so we're going to do this the right way this time. Uh, last time we kind of did the second step, then the first step, and then everything else. So, uh, yellow green. We're going to glaze that over the entire scout fly thing, and then a little bit on the leg. And when you glaze, you want to glaze it upwards and into uh, your highlight. If you get any on something else, just grab it real quick before it messes up your unwanted area. And really, you don't have to worry too much about getting this on the, the actual scalp fly thing a lot if you don't want to. Uh, this is your darkest point. This is your glow effect. Um, the principle behind glow effects is you want the, the brightest point to be where the glow is coming from. So we're going to glaze in our darkest color first. Next, we're going to take bright yellow green. And I'm just pretty much going to grab all these little sections here. You can paint the whole thing. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, but you want that to be brighter than the glow effect. From there, we're going to mix in, uh, I think it's called bright yellow. I had it somewhere on the warm yellow. Um, we're just going to mix a little bit of that into that same green. And I'm pretty much going to grab everything except for the upper and lower I'd say quarter so just like the middle you know um, now if your paint starts to run away from you like mine's doing a little bit just sit and let it dry it's not a big deal you don't need to rush take your time but sometimes just dropping another layer or two on will kind of put you in the right direction and then we're going to take that mix, we're going to add a little bit more yellow to that. And you want this nice and kind of opaque, so you want to let that dry just a tiny bit. You can hit it with a hair dryer if you want, whatever you want to do. And we're just going to kind of paint a line in the middle of that last highlight. And that's going to be like your break point. Now I'm going to go back, and I'm just going to kind of reinforce the glow in other places where I might want it. So uh, around the leg, grab the bottom of the quiver here. If you want, you can 
throw some on the bow. Throw just a little bit on the back side here. And then uh, if you want to emphasize that a little more, you can take that one step up and just kind of highlight that edge a little bit because you're still not going as bright as your brightest color but you know you're you're adding depth to what is already on the model so that'll do pretty happy with that uh, and that's how I painted my uh, what is it chain armor hunters uh, we're still going to base them up. I'm still not 100% sure what I want to do with them yet, but that is kind of the next step here is to base these. So I might do a basing video next. We'll see. But I'm pretty happy with these. Um, i got to paint the eyes still. Um, but besides that, I think I'm ready to call these ones done. So uh, I will see you with the next one. If you guys have a suggestion on what you'd like to see me paint next, uh, I'm happy to take suggestions. I'm leaning towards maybe painting my first monster. Uh, I think I might do the Great Jagras, uh, and then whatever matching armor goes along with that so that everything's the same tone. Uh, but if you have any suggestions, let me know, and uh, I'll try to get to it. Um, I'm going back to work soon, as of the recording of this, uh, so videos are probably going to slow down a little bit. I'm trying not to uh, fall behind too far. I'd like to at least have one video a week. Um, I've got a little bit of a backlog of videos, so it shouldn't be too hard to keep up with that. It's just a matter of actually keeping up with it so with that hopefully you guys enjoyed the video see you next time later